You're listening to the Geekly Chronicles, Series 5, Episode 6. Thanks for listening back to the Geekly Chronicles. This show was recorded on the 9th of December, 2016. This version of the show isn't quite the same as the one that went out live, as we've had to edit out all of the songs. It's nothing personal. We're just big fans of making sure artists get paid for the great things they create. If you want to listen back to the show in its full musical glory, wow. head over to our Mixcloud channel, where you'll find every episode of the Geekly Chronicles as it was meant to be heard. Ooh. Ooh. That's mixcloud.com forward slash G-K-L-Y-C-O. Thanks again for listening. Hello! 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 Oh, ah, and willkommen by der Geekly Chronicles, Volga 6. Sehr spannend, and there ends my high school German. But you will find out later in the show why I just introduced you in another language. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. For now, it's time to insert episode 6 into your ear holes. Yes, indeed. I can't believe we're over a week into December already. I know, it's a bit weird, isn't it? I can't quite get over it myself. I'm slightly in denial. Mm. Yeah, but may actually end, potentially. <laughs> potentially, yeah. Oof, can't wait. <laughs> um, but before the year does end, uh, in the week that we heard about Coca-Cola's selfie bottle. Uh, and the week in which Just Eat completed their first robotic delivery. And in a week where a uh, set of gnomes uh, has been removed from a roundabout because they kept getting beaten up. Mm. Poor gnomes. Poor things. In all those weeks, <laughs> yes, we bring you the Geekly Chronicles. The Geekly Chronicles, another we fantastic do. edition of the show. We've got lots coming up tonight. We do indeed. We have a bit of seventies flavour for this week's show. Uh, yeah. So, with the festive season upon us, we will be recreating the epic Christmas number one battle between Slade and Wizard with uh, a Twitter poll. Well, I mean, not? <laughs> <laughs> it seemed appropriate. It's the 2016 way of settling these kinds of debates, isn't it? Uh, as well as all the nostalgic excitement, we'll have all the usual features, including the tumble fumble, winning words, and game of geeks. Oh, how exciting. Is it possible to be nostalgic about a time we weren't even alive? I don't see why not. Hmm? Uh, we also have another foodie feature. Huh? We'll be sampling some traditional German party cuisine. Indeed thanks to our guest on the show this evening, Matty. And that is why... I began in another language. Uh, <laughs> indeed. The, the, it all becomes clear. As always, we will be playing your requests uh, to get, uh, get them in via our chat room. You can find it on the Geekly website at gk, gkly.co or tweet them to us at gklyco. It's the Geekly Chronicles. Our regular listeners are probably eagerly awaiting the announcement of our winning word. Uh, yes. Eagerly indeed. Oh, very eagerly. Uh, our Series 5 competition is a 90s radio classic. We're spanning the decades for you this evening. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so listen out for this evening's word, basically. That's the, uh, the idea of it. Um, and then you can call in and win a special Geekly Prize bundle. That's right. Everyone gets some Geekly merch. Uh, and then we will add another special gift from the Fiverr Fun blog. So far, we've given away a Muppets Blu-ray, a tea infuser, a peacock feather fascinator, which is very difficult to say correctly, mm -hmm. uh, and some Tetris magnets. You'll have to keep listening to find out what we'll be adding to the bundle for today's lucky winner, but it's, it's quite exciting. Uh, we'd better tell everyone how they go about winning. Yes, yeah. we had. Uh, when you hear the winning word, just call into the show. We'll ask you where you heard the word in the show, just to make sure you were actually listening. And that's about all you have to do. Oh. So without further ado, <laughs> a thazagoraphobia. Wow, that's, that's this, this week's, week's winning word. Yeah. I think we might need to hear it again just so we. Mm. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea. A thazagoraphobia. So, <laughs> basically, well, yeah. you hear a big word that you don't know. Give us a call. Pretty much, it is a good bet to do so. Uh, yes, and here is the voice of our jingles, Hattie, with more details. If you hear the winning word, give us a call in the UK on 020 3389 6245 or in the US on 415 287 9705. You might just win something. 
Calls cost the standard geographic rate from mobiles and BT landlines. Other networks may vary and international calls will cost significantly more. Lines close at the end of the show. Please do not try to enter if you are listening back to the podcast as the competition has closed, but you may still be charged. For full terms or to find another regional number, visit gkly.co slash win. And lines open now. Wow, fantastic. That is exciting. It's is, is very <laughs> exciting. And uh, I'm sure if you want a reminder of the word, it will be up on our website very shortly as well. So you'll be able to check that and, uh, and find out more. Ah, but for now, you know, should we have a request? I, I think, think we, we should. should. Yeah. I've just realised I'm not in the chat room, so I'm missing out on all oh. of the, no doubt, top quality banter that is currently going well, we on. Had, we had quite Indeed. a manic start to the show um, with, with pressing buttons and everything. Yes. Um, and preparing things in the Geekly kitchen ready for some, uh, did, some, some things yeah. from our special guest. It's the Geekly Chronicles. It's time for that regular feature we do. Would, Would you, you fund, fund it? it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Would you indeed? Uh, it's time for our regular foray into fictional crowdfunding. Yes. Indeed, it must be your turn to uh, pitch this time, Kez. It is actually my turn to pitch. And I I, I take pride in, in thinking long and hard about my um, my Would You Fund It ideas. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like to think of things that I could actually bring to market, you know, in a quirky way. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh I've dear. always <laughs> wanted, like, you know how it, films and video games and TV shows and everything, that people have their own theme music. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, incidental yeah. music mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. What if there was a device, like a Fitbit or something, that you could clip onto your trousers or wear around your wrist or something, and it would give you a soundtrack to your life? Other fitness tracking devices are available. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Or not, because that, that well, particular yeah. company seems to be buying them all. But... um. <laughs> Yeah, so a, a soundtrack to your life, basically. So, okay, here's the, you know, however many dollars it would cost question. Um, <laughs> would it have a Homes Under the Hammer mode? <laughs> what would what? that entail? <laughs> I'm, ge- I'm guessing just like between every time you do something and you need to move on to the next thing, you just get a nice jaunty little da, 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 da. But not only that, but everything <laughs> I said, it would pick up a word or a phrase in what I said and just randomly match a lyric of a song to it and play a little <laughs> segment for me. Nice. Well, I haven't planned that in so far, but I think if it was a popularly requested feature, maybe maybe for an extra bit of the crowdfunding, hmm. um, that's a, it's a quality backer bonus there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I'd, I'd imagined a few kind of key scenarios, things like, you know, going to work, being at the shop, being on a date, you know, all, all that kind of stuff that you do in your day-to-day life. And this is kind of how I imagined it being. The food's really good here. I'm having a pretty good time. Yeah, I, I, I know we haven't known each other all that long, and uh, I know that at our first date you got stung by like fifty bees, but I really felt like there's something special between us. I know. I feel it too. I was wondering if you wanted to maybe take the next step and uh, and and you know yeah, blood a death by chocolate dessert with me. Deadline in 20 minutes. 1,000 words left to write on this report. I can do this. Okay, three minutes to go. Now just to click print and... Oh no! Paper jam! Ugh, why do I always get stuck behind some git paying in pennies? 341, 342, 343. Come on, guy, you're killing me here. Oh. No, I dropped my coins. Let me start again. One, two, three. Ugh. Have you heard? The boss is on a real rampage today. Oh, God, really? I'm behind on my quota. I'm going to get killed. Here she comes. Attention sales floor. You are all terrible at your jobs. Do better, sell harder. These home... Carbonite freezing kits aren't going to sell themselves. But ma'am, it's just... Silence, fool. It is not your place to question the great Imperial Corporation. Okay. Uh, what? Hunger. Ram. 
I turn this thing off? So there may be a few kinks to iron <laughs> out, you know, to stop it going off while people are sleeping. Mm. Yeah, but maybe. That, you know, I think who doesn't want to hear the Imperial March when their boss walks uh, along? And I assume <laughs> anyone that likes not being fired. Uh, <laughs> fair. Is it's fair. Kind of the answer to that question. So that's my idea. That's my pitch. Uh, I I would like. Uh, I would like uh, I'd like people to to vote for my would you fund it idea. I remind us what you're calling this one. Ah, uh, it's the the clip sound clip sound clip. That's Is that it. it. The sound clip. I mean, I've got okay. song clip written on my notes. Song but... clip, sound <laughs> clip. It's one of those things. Uh, that name TBC. It's <laughs> really the functionality is the important thing, and uh, I think we've got a breakthrough here. Well, as we know, there are there are two hard problems in computer science: naming things, cache invalidation. And off by one errors. Well, indeed. Um, so, if you want to vote for Kez's Would You Fund It, uh, do let us know. Head on over to gkly.co slash fundit, where you can cast your vote, or you can also check out our Twitter poll, which we have just tweeted. And uh, let us know whether you want a song clip or sound clip or... Whatever, whatever we're calling it's it. called these right. days. Yeah. Homes under the hammer, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think this will revolutionise so, revolutionise social interaction, make mm-hmm. everything that little bit more interesting. Although I want if... the homes under the hammer, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Although if we were all hanging out together and uh, having you know different perspectives on, uh, so on they'd the all, scenario. Be, they'd all be able to talk to each other and based on who was talking at the time, they'd know and they'd be able to play that right bit of music. Uh, and actually yeah. it would help you understand people's intent a lot better. Yes. Because yeah, if everything sort of you know, if your boss walked in and everything suddenly got a bit ominous, you know, you'd you, be you'd like, know, you'd know, okay, stuff's going down here. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, if your boss suddenly walked in and it went, why do birds suddenly, suddenly appear? appear? You'd be like, you'd ching. Yeah, there was some sort of. I feel a visit from HR coming on. Yes, yeah, some sort of HR situation that needed resolving post haste. <laughs> it's the Geekly Chronicles. That request there for Meek Japesh. I like that one. <laughs> it's very good, actually. Quite cool. bouncy and upbeat. Yeah, that's what we need at this time of the evening. Always. Um, but what we also need at this time of the evening is some food. Yes. And joining us, uh, well, here in the studio, but um, for those people that have never visited the uh, the Tiny Kettle Studios here, it's uh, it's great because we actually have, well, not many people will have, what are you looking at me like that for? Not I many people will have visited. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Um, not not many of you have just decided to pop, pop along. Our, pop along. We yes. don't have webcams, but if we did, uh, you would know that uh, that right <laughs> if next these door. Walls could talk. Yes, right next door to the studio, we have a kitchen, a big, fully featured, fully functioning kitchen. Because um, you know, why would we not? Oh, indeed, <laughs> we love our food, and uh, we have someone with us in the kitchen right now. And if the magic of all of this uh, lovely wireless shenongledongs uh, works... <laughs> uh, wireless shenongledongs. Sh- 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 is your shenongledong wireless? That's the question. <laughs> uh, that's that's something well, we will not be posing now that is, Twitter. Now, that part. is a personal question. I was not prepared to answer this evening. <laughs> uh, but we mentioned earlier that we had someone joining us to make some German food with us this evening. And so without further ado, hello. 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 Well, you are... Describe for me where you are right now. Um... In the kitchen, uh, <laughs> cooking. <laughs> well, that was In, descriptive. Yes. Um. Uh, so this is Matty, who is our, uh, our our volunteer chef for the evening. Yes. Yep. I'm uh, cooking some Kieserspätzle. Uh, it. I thought it was German. Found out recently it may be Austrian. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, who's counting? Mm-hmm. Austria, presumably. What, what <laughs> is it, though, I think, is the question. Um, it's it's more or less uh, macaroni cheese, but Austrian and nicer, and without the cheese sauce, with normal cheese. Ooh. That's quite nice. Ooh. That does sound pretty good. Ooh. And you've got, got some other snacks and things for us this evening as well, right? Yes, I do. These I didn't make, as I'm not... Boo. <laughs> not all that skilled. Um... We've left you alone in a kitchen. Uh, you're saying you're not all that skilled. Is the place on fire? No. Is there fire? <laughs> no. Right. Good. Okay. Is I mean, there a like, risk? even <laughs> even deliberate fire. Like, is is the mm-hmm. is the hob on? <laughs> what What are the other things you brought for us? Then we'll we'll, we'll stop um, making fun. We're hungry, so we're not going to make any more fun. Stollen. Okay. It's, uh, the marzipan stollen. It's. Uh, Sweet, 
Christmas thing. Sounds quite nice. Uh, and so while uh, while you're talking to us in a, in, a, in a perfectly British accent, you are actually German. Yes, I am German. So could you please explain for any of our German listeners what you are doing right now? In German? Yeah, well, that would be useful. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, it's, it's been a while since I was actually in Germany. I'll give it a shot, though. Uh, ich koche gerade um, Essen für die Leute, die gerade Radio machen. That was the best I could do, honestly. Well, and I think you may have just insulted us. I don't know, but... Don't think I did. I actually got that on my, on my <laughs> secondary you? school German. <laughs> See, I, I have never studied German, so I have no idea. Uh, no idea, literally. But, Matty, you're, uh, you're cooking for us, so later on in the show we'll be able to taste this... Uh, uh, what was it called? Käsespätzle. 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 Okay, say it again, Matty. Käsespätzle. I'm sure there are people Spätzle. who can Spätzle. do a better job at pronouncing that. But <laughs> well, okay. So Käsespätzle, we'll be able to try that later on. And some Stollen. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, but in order to um, to get you rocking out a bit while you're cooking and hopefully mm-hmm. not setting fire to things as you go, um, what uh, what would you like us to play for you, song wise? Um, how about "It's My Life" by Bon Jovi? Quite like that. I'm pretty sure we can manage that. Cool. I'll continue to not set stuff on fire. All right, Good and stuff. we'll continue to play music and talk about stuff. Cool. <laughs> That's what we do here. It's the Geekly Chronicles. Uh, don't forget, if you want to get your requests in, in the chat room, type exclamation mark request and then tap in your song. We'll get it through here. Request us on Twitter. Uh, tell us in the chat room, wherever you like, really. Uh, we will play your songs. Yeah. Hurl whether... songs at us and we'll play them on the radio. Yeah, whether it's... we like them or not, basically. Yeah. There's, there's no veto <laughs> unless it's busted. Um... <laughs> I love oh, but... how the vetoed band seems to change every series. Because when we began series two, uh, when when we revamped the Geekly Chronicles, we put we had a, a Rebecca Black veto. Yeah, but now she's now... now she's only good, ironically. In fact, <laughs> Busted are okay from a retro point of view, mm. but uh, uh, no One Direction. See, I like a few of their songs. I can't remember what they're called. I, no, I don't remember what they're called, but I danced all night to this, like, it, I don't know, it was the best song ever. Mm. Did you really? Uh-huh. See what I did there? I did. We're cool. Uh-huh. We're cool. Fortunately, um... Nobody in this room lights up my world like nobody else, so we don't have that to deal Stop with. Stop now. Um, <laughs> I will start to beat you like those poor gnomes on that roundabout. Indeed. Um, Speaking of gnomes on a roundabout. <laughs> it, was, it was such a tragic news story. Yeah. Right, this this roundabout. Um, it was in Essex. Yeah. Um, just they've been put there to brighten up the place. Because, of course, gnomes brighten up a place, right? Often I think when I go somewhere, you know what would make the Taj Mahal better? Gnomes. Well, this is by the look of the the picture on the, on this uh, on that I'm looking at right now. Um, you know, it's a roundabout with a couple of boulders and a lot of sort of shingles on it. So it's not a particularly bright roundabout to begin with. Oh, and the little gnomes, you know, I suppose do their job. They're all blue and small and gnomey. Blue and small <laughs> and gnomey. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course, that is what I look for in a man. And a roundabout. And a roundabout, and a roundabout <laughs> clearly, yes. It's probably more what I look for in a roundabout than in a man, to be honest. I, ju- I just feel sorry <laughs> for the gnomes. I feel bad for them. I just want to pick them up and give them a big gnome hug. Um, have you ever received a gnome hug? I can't say that I have. No. no My, any gnome I have interacted with has remained decidedly inanimate it's, throughout. It's like a, it's like a, a, a regular hug, but, um, <laughs> but more gnome <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, good to know. It wasn't the only good news story this week, though, right? Uh, what, was that a good news story? I'm not sure that it is. But, tragic, tragic news story. Um, speaking of tragic news stories, actually, uh, this week Coca-Cola made a selfie bottle. What? Because apparently we needed one. A little while ago, it just kind terrible. of came to our attention this week. Ah, is that what it so is? I think this was made by uh, Coke in Israel. Oh, uh, right. So people Back in the summer. don't look ridiculous enough taking selfies. Nope. So let's put a camera on the bottom of a bottle mm-hmm. and get peak selfie action going on when people drink their Coca-Cola. Yeah, so apparently... It, the Other brands of soft drink are available. Indeed. So apparently the, the device sort of fits on the bottom of the bottle and then when it detects a 70 degree tilt... Uh, the optimum takes... Coke sipping angle, mm-hmm. <laughs> clearly. 
uh, it takes a photo and then you can transfer the pictures um, through its USB port. Wow, a USB Coke bottle. Frankly, I'm amazed it doesn't have Bluetooth. Yeah, I, I'm surprised that it's not all Wi-Fi or something. Yeah. So that it can... It doesn't it automatically can... upload your photos yeah. to the Coca-Cola cloud. Yes. Where you can share them on all social platforms available, plus they sell it to the government. Imagine a Coca-Cola <laughs> cloud. That would rain Coke. Oh, wow. That's like that cloudy with a chance of meatballs, but but it's terrible for drink. everyone's health and yes. damaging to the environment. And everything would be sticky. The ants would just be... Yes. They'd it's, take over. You, the ants you, would yes. rule the earth. Do you mm-hmm. want ants because this is how you get ants? The ants will rule the earth if Coca-Cola selfie bottles take off. This is yes. a Geekly Chronicles fact <laughs> right here. This um, is exclusive. You heard it here first. Yes. But on the bright side, if we were ever thinking about cooking with bugs like we talked about earlier in the series... And we we'd... wanted to attempt some ants in. Yes, we would have plenty of ants <laughs> in our proverbial pants. Indeed, we would. And speaking of ants in our proverbial pants. Oh, ants in our pantry. Ants, ants in, in your our pantry. pantry. There, there we go. We That's go. a good one. Oh, nice. Hashtag marketing. <laughs> Hashtag YOLO. Well, speak... Hashtag ants. Oh, God. <laughs> well, speaking... Hashtag selfie. That's Are ants you done? with a Z. Hashtag interruption. Are you done? Hashtag your face. Can I, can I do my news story now? Go on then. <laughs> okay. So, speaking of ants in your pantry, um, <laughs> Just Eat. Um, Ew. Have... Ants and Just Eat together that doesn't work. Yeah, th- there, are, there are no ants in this. That was just a terrible, terrible segue. Um, it's, it's not like I'm on the radio or anything. It doesn't, it doesn't count. Um, but they have carried out their first robotic delivery. Now, that's pretty cool. I mean, the thing I like about Just Eat is it cuts down my time of having to interact with other humans. Yeah. Now I don't even have to interact with a human at all. Indeed. You order the food and it shows up at your door as per this little robot buggy. Yeah, look, it's thing. basically a cool box or a warm box uh, on wheels with a little whatever. just eat flag. Whatever a, temperature. A warm box. <laughs> yeah, whatever temperature your box needs to be. But what is the opposite of cool? Hot. Okay, it's a hot box <laughs> on wheels. That just sounds funny. But what's cooler <laughs> than being cool? Thank you, Catherine. All right, 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 all right. So the hot box trundles down the road on its six wheels. There's a six wheeled hot box trundling down the road. It just, yeah, got in my head there for some reason. And then, okay, I love that it's got a little just eat flag on it as well. So pretty cool. Um, so in order to open the box, you have to get a, a code that, that they text to you. Otherwise, obviously, the, the robot could get sort of mugged on its way to your house. You wouldn't mug a robot for a takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would. would oh, is that, oh, is that a pizza? I really fancy a pizza. Fight me, robot. <laughs> <laughs> mug a it's robot like, for like when a it, When it turns out to have lasers and intercontinental ballistic missiles in them, that it's like, ah, well, this, this takeaway is defended. It's yeah. not so much a hot box as like... Uh, you know, a T T one hundred or whatever the first <laughs> model of Terminator was. All right. Yeah. So here's here's the ultimate question for tonight. Forget this this ultimate Christmas <laughs> song thing, which, by the way, you can continue voting in over on our Twitter account. Um, uh, Wizard are currently pulling very far ahead. But the ultimate question is: If this robot was armed with lasers and ICBMs and stuff, would you fight it for a pizza? Mug this robot <laughs> for a pizza, <laughs> or? Every Coke bottle becomes a selfie bottle. Oh no, I'd I'd fight a robot for a pizza. I'd rather I'd rather die a hero. You'd than, rather risk I'd rather the die ICBM. a hero than live a selfie monger. <laughs> I'd just drink Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Always uh, thinking one step ahead of us. Indeed. Gosh uh, darn you. And fulfilling our requirements under Ofcom's product placement regulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, love we love them rules. Yes. Um <laughs> Now, Other brands of soft drink and indeed <laughs> online takeaway ordering company are available. They just might not have robots. And we, we should also probably state they are not currently armed with ICBMs, but that's <laughs> clearly the only logical progression. Deliveroo here. drivers, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Deliveroo I'm, dramas are, are armed with a slap and they're great at melee <laughs> fighting. Yes. They are all trained in hand-to-hand combat. Deliveroo dramas. Deliveroo dramas. Deliveroo dramas. <laughs> that's very good. Doof, 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 doof. 
Street. We've invented a new soap opera right yes. here. Never mind neighbours. Move over Coronation Street. Deliveroo Dramas is the next Netflix series. I oh, love it. Well, there's a would you find I it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Oh, I watched that. It's the Geekly Chronicles. Yes. Uh, now, before we move on to anything else, we're going to uh, check on Matty in the kitchen. Matty, have you burned anything yet? Um, no, not an. You don't not sound really. very sure, I have There's to say. There's some quite well done onions. I wouldn't quite classify them as burned yet. Caramelised. Caramelised, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what I was going for. Excellent. Perfect. I and and even if you're that. lying, we can't see you, so it sounded convincing enough. <laughs> Indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we can hear the hear stuff cooking away there, so you keep going. Um, and uh, <laughs> Yes, we'll check back in with you in a bit. Yes. Catherine, you've been burrowing through the internet this week. What mollusks, mollusks of glory have you run into? Mollusks. Yes. Yes. Mollusks. I'm picturing you as a star-nosed mole for this analogy. Right. In case that helps. Star-nosed. Okay. Yes, specifically. Okay. Okay, I haven't heard of what? those before, <laughs> but I'm... I, I think I should probably be good with that. I'm, I'm usually happy with mole. I've got like small hands and I blink a lot in the light. This is true. This is very true. And you do think Diglett's quite a cute Pokemon, so. Um, it's kind of mole like. Mm, kind of, I suppose, yeah. Sort of poking out of the earth. Yeah. I've only ever caught one. Have you really? Yeah. Uh, I've never caught any. Oh. I'm pretty okay. bad at Pokemon Go. Well, um, clearly, I'm the very best light now, ever was. Well, absolutely. Boom. Indeed. Right. Tumble so, fumble. Tumble fumble. <laughs> yeah, so random uh, stuff from around the internet. Okay, so this is um, cute web comics uh, again. Um, so I discovered uh, poorly drawn lines via Tumblr, but you can find everything on poorlydrawnlines.com. Uh, there's lots of, it's basically just lots of cute little cartoons in squares, and it's adorable. Um, so I would recommend uh, checking out the archive where you can find everything or you can just click back and forward and just see random little uh, comic strips on the site. Do you have a favourite character? Um, I particularly like the little English muffin uh, <laughs> That's a good one. comic, um, which is, you know, time for an English muffin. And the English muffin is uh, sort of a time traveller from Victorian London. Yes. Oh, that's quite you, cool. You kind of have to see it to believe it. <laughs> yeah, I um, I quite like I the voices. So. I quite like the recurring character Ernesto. I think he's quite quite yes. cool. <laughs> Pops up every now and then and says some obscene things. Indeed. I like the the little birds. The the like the trash. Is it trash birds? I I think they're good. I like them. I like uh, anything with trash in the title. <laughs> I'm there. It's it's kind it of appeals. Up the yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hi everyone. Meet Catherine. She's trash. <laughs> yeah. I believe um, once you described yourself to me as an overflowing trash receptacle, which was one of my favourite uh, yeah. phrases you have ever used to describe yourself. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. However, so, we, lo- anyway. we love you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I meant it in a... I, d- I didn't mean that as a, you know, self-deprecating way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's very positive to feel like a trash receptacle. <laughs> yes. There's something fun about being trash. Right. Anyway, so as always, the Tumble Fumble is very uh, visual for uh, an audio medium, um, which is why the next thing uh, is uh, to help you with your uh, festive shopping. You know, as we were saying at the beginning of the show, the uh, the year approaches its end and a lot of people are buying gifts. Um, so while we've also talked about the Fiverr Fun blog on the show, which is fantastic for, um, I suppose... Uh, low cost um, high awesome gifts that are good for kind of secret secret Santa Santa. Um, this stuff isn't um, this uh, new site that I'm going to tell you about this is is called (laughs) thisiswhyimbroke.com is that Uh, why you're broke? uh, well I don't think it is really but um, (laughs) it might be the reason in the future why I'm broke Um, so thisiswhyimbroke.com is just more awesome stuff that you can buy. And it doesn't seem to really have a cap on price. So some things are quite cheap. I think there's actually some overlap with the Fiverr Fun blog. Nice. But um, but then, you know, it also goes up. You know, I'm seeing I'm seeing things here, like a, a projection keyboard and piano is like £70. Um, oh, so, wow. you know, there are more expensive things on here as well. Um, but, yeah, some quite good gift ideas. I think I've already clicked through on a couple of them. And, 
and sort of added them to shopping baskets for for Christmas. So it's already proved useful for me. I like that one. I've I've just seen on there. Just, I mean, all of the stuff that is on the front page looks pretty awesome. But the one I'm most excited about, which will probably give you the uh, the measure of who I am as a person, uh, is the DIY dateable food storage container <laughs> for nine pounds. Ooh. Where, yeah, um, so it's a, it's essentially a Tupperware tub, isn't it? But yeah. there's like a little rotatey thing on the top so you can put the date in which you, I suppose, you cook put the it food. In there. Yeah. Or and put it in there. Nice. Then you never never forget what's soon to go off. Available in three sizes. Nice. That's very cool. Mm. Also some giant balloons. <gasps> a DIY Darth Vader helmet pattern. It looks like a crochet Ooh. pattern. So if you're a crafty crochet person. It's, j- it's only £6.94. Although that's the pattern. Yeah, it is the pattern. I mean, you do have to crochet it yourself. You actually have to make the thing. Make uh, the thing? Wow. Knitted, dissected animals. How? That's weird. Yeah, anyway. So we're quite distracted by this. But, um, yep, that's that's a thing. Might help you with your Christmas shopping. Uh, Give you some inspiration. Take away my credit card. (laughs) (laughs) confiscate it from me okay okay we'll they move gave on. you a credit we'll card <laughs> we'll move on to the next thing before uh, before this gets messy yes uh, <laughs> so the final thing um is a little bit 70s and a little bit foodie it is mm. 70s party or 70s dinner party uh you can find it on twitter at 70s underscore party that's 70s underscore party uh so this is uh something that i discovered through cares um, essentially, I am I am all about the retro. Mm-hmm. Yes, and the food. So, a lady called Anna discovered some uh, some cookbooks that had belonged to her mum. Is that right? Yes, yeah, cookbooks that belonged to her mum, and had, had some of the things in them had been cooked, uh, and no. <laughs> and Anna remembers them from childhood and is posting them online, and they are epic, and and obviously. This has developed quite a following. So other people are finding these amazing sort of recipes from the 70s and sharing them uh, with 70s dinner party. And then they're getting retweeted. So it's just this amazing sort of receptacle of 70s food nostalgia. Uh, I mean, the pinned tweet at the top of the page just kind of sums it all up for me. Mm-hmm. It's just a lettuce that somebody has cut in half and it's just full of what I assume is some kind of brightly colored pate or... Yeah, it looks like it. Huh. it sort of, yeah. some kind of, I don't know, like veggie, salmon-y horror in the <laughs> middle. The, yeah, the food looks very unappetizing on this, uh, this feed and a little bit scary. It's all yeah. kind of orangey, browny. Oh, uh, mm. Sums up the 70s, really, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> I, um, I've been scrolling down this this page and I, I've seen one um, that is a like a nativity scene made entirely out of meat. So I think made entirely of pork, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, nativity Actually. scene made entirely of pork because because that's uh, not going to be controversial at all at this time <laughs> yeah. for certain religious Absolutely groups. Absolutely not. Well, um, it looks like bacon, hot dog sausages and tin foil, yeah. mostly. They've made little, little uh, hot dog sausage people. There's a hot dog sausage baby Jesus. They've wrapped... Uh, like the three oh, wise men in there's bacon. There's a hot dog sausage I baby wonder... Jesus. That is that's the name of my next album. Hot, hot dog, dog sausage, sausage baby uh, Jesus. Brilliant. Uh, the the roof is made of streaky bacon. Yes. <laughs> and, and, the, and I'm the... wondering what is the sort of hay or straw that's strewn around the place. I don't could, know. It could, could that be, be mealworms or <laughs> um, maybe grated carrot? Possibly. It doesn't um, look like carrot. It looks a bit. Onion. I don't know what Beige carrots you're carrot. eating. <laughs> It could be <laughs> my seventies <first> carrots. <laughs> mm. My first thought was it could be like um, those French fries crisps you can get, but they're they're too skinny for that. So I, mm. I have no idea. Maybe what. French fries crisps were skinnier in the seventies. I wasn't Possibly. alive. I've got no idea. No. Who knows? None of us in here. I just were imagine alive everyone in the ate 70s. tinned carrots in the seventies. Mm. Maybe they did. Maybe they're finally cut tinned carrots. Although <laughs> we're very, very Deglo orange, yeah. if memory serves. But I think the the only thing we can really do is is uh, ask these questions to the source of the seventies dinner party, and so we will, after the next song, be talking to Anna Palai, the uh, creator of this phenomenon, yes, um, the instigator of what has yes. just 
what you have just witnessed. If yes. you're if you're having your dinner right now and you've just seen the the seventies dinners go by, we apologise. Yeah, I can't help but apologise. Well, that's quite a nice smell coming up from the kitchen. Mm. I can smell those caramelised onions. They yeah. smell good. Jake, <sighs> Matty, just to check, oh. nothing's burning, is it? Uh no, no. All good, good. good. You sure? <laughs> yep. Right. Okay. It's a lovely smell coming up here, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um. Yes, sorry, you were saying... I was saying Jake in the chat room uh, has just come back to hear us say a nativity scene made entirely of meat and clearly needs to stop going AFK. Yes, you do. It's it's hard to pick up the thread. Oh, and uh, Salty Buckles in the chat room has, has pasted a link to... I think it's to... Salty Buckets. Salty Buckets? <laughs> salty Buckets, yes. Salty Buckles sounds different. Well, it's more like a buckle than a bucket. They're two different things. Mm. I can't read. Speed read, obviously. Has posted a picture in the chat room of a Just Eat robot with an intercontinental ballistic missile on the top of it. (laughs) That is amazing. Uh, So if you're in the chat room, please check that out. We'll probably uh, share (laughs) that on our Twitter shortly as well. Indeed we will. Uh, But yes, as we say, coming up after the next song, we're going to be chatting to Anna Palai. Um, It's the Geekly Chronicles. So we are now joined by Anna Palai. Hello, Anna. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Lovely. Now, I love your Twitter account. I absolutely love it. It makes me both hungry and a little ashamed of an entire decade all at the same Mm, time. I think you should also be ashamed for feeling hungry when looking at it. (laughs) (laughs) It's true, but I shamefully will eat anything. So what made you think of sharing a lost generation of food with the world? I left my job last summer and um, in between setting up my company I work in publishing I was at my mum's house looking through her old cookbooks which um, when I was a child I used to frequently look through and do the old thumbs up for recipes I like the look of and thumbs down for ones that didn't look so good so I thought I'd I'd have a flick through them and she used to collect the bi-monthly magazines of Carrier's Kitchen and Supercook and then you put them all together in a big ring binder um, and she still religiously used them. So I was looking through them and I was struck by initially um, one called Eggs Cooked Like Tripe which um, being my mum had a massive tick next to it to say that yes she'd cooked it and yes it was a success so I found it really funny put it on Facebook mainly to embarrass her um, and it really went from there the more I looked through them the more revolting or seemingly revolting recipes I found. I put them on Facebook and then thought, I'm going to bore my friends very, very quickly with this, so I'll, I'll bore people on Twitter instead, because they have a bit more of a choice whether to, <laughs> to look at it or not. And it, and it really went from there. I was lucky enough that it, it took off. Um, and as I say, I work in publishing. Spoke to my friend who agreed to be an agent for me and um, put together a proposal. So, yeah. <laughs> so we love food on this show. Do you love food or... Have, have the things you've posted been enough to kind of put you off food forever? <laughs> there have been times when I thought I might never eat again. Um, <laughs> I do like food. I don't like much of the food I post, but I, I think what what's worth saying is that when I went, I mean, particularly with the book, but when I went into it, I was very aware that a lot of food, the reason it looks bad is to do with the styling of the time, it's to do with the food photography, um, uh, and I think that it's fair to say that the way that food is presented now will also be mocked in years to come. So I don't think that every single recipe I post necessarily would taste bad. It just looks either funny or revolting. <laughs> but um, you know, I, I like to keep the two things separate. And I and and also a lot of the cookbooks I'm looking through have you know plenty of dishes that you would still eat now. So I I, I think. Um, I, I do enjoy food. I am a vegetarian, though, so there's not many of the dishes I post that I would actually eat myself. <laughs> yeah, and uh, certainly with um, things like everything being covered in aspic and gelatin, for a vegetarian, that's an instant no. Absolutely. I mean, even if it didn't sound revolting in the first place, I wouldn't be able to eat it. it, it it's, quite, <laughs> it's quite a useful get-out for me as well. <laughs> but for our younger listeners, uh, what is all this about? What is aspic and, and things like that? And why is all the stuff you post considered so awful? I don't know. I mean, I'm not a food historian as such, so I, do, I don't really know why it was so popular. I think one of the things I found while, while doing the book was that convenience food became a really big thing in the 70s because freezers became much more common, so many more households had freezers. 
and so a lot more people were buying convenient food but then rather than just serving say fish fingers you would find that they would serve fish fingers with pineapple or fish fingers cooked in foil with a sort of warm tartar sauce on it so that that was one thing that you could see very clearly what why it happened um as for the aspic thing and the gelatine I, I don't really know. I, I mean, even if someone told me the historical reason for it, it would still still seem pretty inexplicable as to why you would actually cook with it. Um, and what I found, one of the things I found interesting doing the Twitter account as well is that I have a lot of um, American followers, and a lot of them say, oh, yeah, we still have that at Thanksgiving, or my grandma still makes that. So I think, it, you know, to, in the UK, it doesn't seem quite as... It, well, I mean, it seems a much stranger thing, but in America... It, not that many people are phased by it. They're more phased by the stuff that's gone into the aspic in the first place. Um, <laughs> because I, I think at some point it seemed like they'd put pretty much any food in aspic and that would be your dinner. How many of the things you've posted have you actually tried? Mm, probably none of them. Oh, <laughs> I excellent. can't remember any I've actually eaten. I, I think the, actually the ones I did post I, of um, recipes I'd actually made when I was a child because I had a good housekeeping um cookbook for children and um the the very first thing i remember making was something called a sausage cabin which was um a house made of with walls of sausage and a sausage chimney on a, a, with a mashed potato filling and then sliced tomatoes for the roof and peas for the garden um, so that, that, that's one of the things i do remember but obviously that that's more about how it's styled than what the actual food is um, but no, not too much. But when I had the launch party for my book, I asked a food stylist to kindly make some of the dishes. So she made the cauliflower surprise, which is a cauliflower, which um, I think has eight sections cut out of it, which are then filled with frozen beef burgers um, and then slices of tomato decorating it. That looked quite spectacular. She also made um, a cucumber and grape lime jelly mould. Um, which again was quite quite revolting. And my favourite thing she made, which actually isn't in the book because there aren't stills of it, are Fanny Craddock made something called boiled egg swans, where she um, cuts sides of the boiled eggs off, sticks them back on with potato, and makes their necks out of a pipe cleaner, and then they're floating on a bed of blue mashed potato. And I think that's my favourite thing that I've seen made from it. But even though it's vegetarian, I I didn't really fancy trying it. Wow. That's uh, that sounds quite incredible. I mean, when you started out talking about the sausage cabin, I was thinking I could get on board with that. But then, yeah, uh, exactly. Boiled egg swans, blue mashed potato. I think was the thing that eventually put me off that entire thing. Yeah, I think so. And I think I think food dye was quite unnecessarily included in a lot of the recipes. Um, one of the ones that I also had made was something called a sandwich, which is a, a loaf of bread cut horizontally in each. Each layer has a different filling, but then the whole thing is iced with um, a green um, cream cheese and then piped with um, gr- a yellow cream cheese and mayonnaise mix, and that really looked particularly disgusting and didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Yeah, it seems, seems like a bit of overkill there. On yeah, the, uh... I think so. It also made my son cry because it smelled so bad. So. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's an interesting point. Obviously, diet and food consumption is changing massively, and yeah. uh, it almost sounds like we've simplified a little bit since the 1970s. Do you think we'll ever end up back there? Do you think this food is going to become more fashionable or more stylish again? Well, I think what could well happen is the same as that happens with fashion, in that some of some of the elements of it may well come back, but in a, a sort of with a modern twist on it and I know there's certain restaurants I think there's someone called Coin Laundry um, in in London that does a take on 70s food but they wouldn't be serving it exactly as it was then in the same way that you know flares came back but they were modified for a modern a modern audience and modern consumers um, I mean I, I, I think there will at some point come a, a change with food um, styles part of the reason I did the book was a, a reaction to the sort of smug sense of wellness connected with food and why I like the food from the 70s is the fun element of it and the fact that you're cooking 
yes, to impress someone, but also to share it with someone instead of, you know, sort of Instagrammers taking photos of something that really they're just showing how virtuous they are as opposed to anything else. And I, I don't really like that. I like food as being something that you have with friends or possibly with your boss <laughs> um and and there's a you know an enjoyment element to it i mean whether you would actually enjoy the food in it is a is another matter but it was certainly made to be enjoyed yeah there is a big difference between a hipster posting their quinoa salad to instagram and yeah, some of the, I, I, the things I, I, in the book. i think you know when people are doing that I, I tend to feel that they're doing it to say look how virtuous i am um because uh, yeah, and I, th- I think in that way, I, mean, I, I, I know there's been a, a sort of people now deriding the whole idea of wellness in eating and, you know, various cooks have come out and blasted it for promoting sort of unhealthy eating habits as opposed to healthy eating habits. You know, the idea that some food is good and some food is bad rather than having a balanced approach to it all. Now, I have a saying that the best and worst things in life are brown. Why exactly does everything from the 1970s look so brown? I don't think that I don't think the photography is necessarily <laughs> um, lasted that well. I I don't really know though, to be honest. I think you know I, I look at old photos of um, my house where I grew up initially, and everything was very brown there. And I don't think you can only blame it on the, the camera film. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I I suppose people might say. Yes, nowadays, why is everything muted, neutral mushroom colours and stuff? It, it's probably the same thing. It's just a fashion. But yeah, I, I think probably the the camera film has not lasted that well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think back to where my grandparents lived, and everything there seemed brown. The carpet. Yeah, the and I deliberately and... when when I've done when I posted stuff on Twitter or in the book, I've I've deliberately never used any filters as well because you need to show it as it is. Um, I mean, some of, some of the recipe cards I used, the photography is quite extraordinary. I mean, some of the pictures are completely out of focus and not centred in the slightest. It's almost like they've said, OK, let's just slap this on and go to press. Um, whereas other ones, I know that Robert Carrier um, styled a lot of the shoots himself. I don't think he actually took the photos, but, you know, a lot of work went into styling them, whereas I think with some of probably the the ones coming from big brands um it it was probably more of a rush job (laughs) so we've had people on the show this series talking about eating bugs now because you're a vegetarian it kind of doesn't really apply but do you think you'd rather eat insects or one of these 70s recipes uh as you say it probably is a moot question but i'd definitely rather have a dish from one of the 70s books (laughs) i did once go to one of those restaurants where they serve um, bugs and other, you know, strange meats and stuff. And I have to say, it was one of the most unpleasant experiences. I mean, they did have vegetarian food, but just the thought of other people eating bugs at neighbouring tables was enough to turn my stomach. <laughs> yes, it's not something that we've actually tried here, but we are considering it. Yeah, well, it's good to keep an open mind, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're doing more than considering it. Oh, or is that a spoiler? Anyway, Anna, what's next? What else is on the horizon? I'm not really sure, to be honest. I do have one other idea for a book, but I'm not quite sure if it if it's ready to to go. I, I think what was good about this book was that it was such a natural transition from, you know, sitting around to it becoming a book. Um, I didn't, when I left my last job, everyone said, oh, are you going to write a book now? And I was like, absolutely no way. I'm not a writer. There's no way I'm doing it. So the fact that a year later I'm here with a book out is very strange. But I, I didn't ever set out to write it. It was more, I, once the Twitter took off, I thought, actually, this would make a really good book. So um, I've got lots of other projects that I'm working on, and actually I'm agenting. Um, so some of the ideas for books I have, I know that I'm not the right person, so I'm sort of talking to other people about writing them instead, which I think makes much more sense. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And speaking of the book then, how can we get our hands on it? And what's in store for us if, if we do get a copy? Well, you can get your hands on it, hopefully, in most bookshops. Um, it's also available on, on online. And I think what's... In, I, I've seen the book by courses, so it starts with canapes and goes all the way through to desserts, but then I also have food for children and what I originally termed foreign food because that's what it would have been called then, but now it's called around the world. Um, 
but also at the book uh, at the end of the book i've included i think five or six recipes that you can try yourself they're all pretty simple but <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been thank uh, you for having me on. It's been fascinating to meet the person behind one of the most interesting Twitter accounts, <laughs> I suppose is the way of putting it, of uh, of the past twelve months. As always, we ask our guests to pick a song. Do you have something you would like us to play for you? I'd like "Strange Relationship" by Prince. Um, nothing to do with the seventies whatsoever, but I've always been a huge Prince fan like most people I guess and I always wanted to have a Prince song at my wedding but we quickly realised that there weren't too many that were suitable to play in front of the whole family so (laughs) this is one of the few where he doesn't get too um, outrageous by the end of the song so (laughs) that one please Brilliant, thank you very much Okay, thanks very much It's the Geekly Chronicles Thank you very much Anna for joining us that was a A very insightful, if not very slightly disturbing interview. Yes. Look into the 70s there. (laughs) Yeah. A little bit scary. We learned learned a lot about food there. I think Um, I learned a lot about life from that in general. Although it did remind me of a programme I watched on BBC Two, I believe, called Back in Time for Dinner, uh, where Giles Corran took a family essentially back in time. He started in the 50s and each week was another decade. And they like completely refitted this family's kitchen to 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. standards oh. every week. And interesting. Some of the food was quite horrific, I have to say. Yeah, well, I'm certainly <laughs> not looking at time traveling to the 70s anytime soon, I think. No. no. I think, you know, the 80s, I'd maybe go for the odd night out or, or band, but I don't think I'd be eating there either. Oh, um, yeah. uh, maybe not. Mm. I remember eating the 90s and that was sketchy enough. So, um, <laughs> Or the Angel Delight. And <laughs> oh, no, I still love Angel Delight. It's there's something horribly okay about it. Sorry. Horribly okay. <laughs> Not thinking of food, we've forgotten about Matty down in the kitchen. <gasps> Indeed we have. It's enough to give him a phasagoraphobia. Uh, oh dear. Should I'd we be check sc- on him? I'd be scared of that. Shall we uh, check on him and see how he's doing? How's he, how are you doing, Matty? Uh, good. I've got food ready. I'm just working out a way of carrying three plates. Fantastic! Wow, yep. is it? Well, why don't you can just kind of run them up? Well, well yeah, cool. we'll. Um, well, you really only have to carry three forks. That's true. One true. plate, uh, one plate, know, three forks. Be easier. <laughs> uh, that's where things got a little bit difficult. I couldn't find any forks, so ah. teaspoons. I'm sorry. Teaspoons <laughs> are fine. Uh, probably all yeah. in the dishwasher. Ah, oh, there we go. Earlier. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, coming up then. We're, we're excited to try this. The smell is is permeating the studio. <laughs> it, it very much is. Mm. I'm getting this uh, sense. It is. I'm. What's yeah. Being, what's being made? It's. Uh, it is quite a strong smell of caramelised onion. So, I mean, I as we say, explained but... earlier to those listeners that weren't there at the, the start of the show, we um, we have uh, Matty joining us. You can hear some clattering away there. Um, <laughs> who is uh, is on his way up to the studio. With some food that he has been making, and here it, it comes through the door now. Hello, Matty. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I brought food. Wow. So, oh, so explain to us what we've got here. Um, well, it's rather oversized, slightly bland spätzle. Spätzle. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. All right. So Ooh. explain explain to the listeners what spätzle is. Well, it's more or less egg noodles. I'm not sure if that's a term you can use with yeah, melted I cheese. <laughs> and uh, right. should we give this oh, a go? I'm gonna then? tuck in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's the. Uh, Catherine's already off. Keep keep explaining. Someone yeah. tuck cheese. Um, caramelized onion, <laughs> mm. or very much fried onion. I'm not sure if it's quite caramelized. I mean, it may or may not be, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> good. <Yeah. laughs> that's actually quite good. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so. Typically in Germany, when would you eat this? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'd say midday, evening. Definitely not breakfast. <laughs> is there a particular time of year that it is more fashionable? I doubt it. Um, <laughs> they just eat it whenever. Yeah, yeah, I guess. This is pretty good. Mm. Mm. I'm getting. It's a very different texture to macaroni and cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Mm. Yeah. I- 
I'm enjoying yeah, this. Yeah, and more, you know, pure on the cheese front, less on the sauce front. Yes. Mm. Yeah, there's more cheese and chewy bits. Mm. Cheese and chewy bits. Yep, I think mm. that'd be a good thing. I should work in marketing. <laughs> I did try it earlier, and uh, I, I believe that it's a little bit bland. On The chewy bl- bits should be slightly more uh, tasteful, mm. but I, I tried. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. great. This is a great job. Thank you. Um, Fair enough. So what else have you brought for us, German food-wise? Uh, well, there was the Stollen, which yep. is the Christmas uh, cake. Where's that at? I'm almost finished. Let's give that a try. <laughs> it's still downstairs. Well, I'll go grab yep. that. Okay. Fantastic. Mm. This is pretty good. Mm. Kind of uh, yeah. not unhappy about this. No, it's, it is quite enough. I had no of, idea what to expect. I really didn't. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of vary up how much onion you have with it, depending on taste. It'd be yeah. interesting to hear if any of our listeners have ever tried this. Oh, there's a lot of onion. I love this. I love the onion. It is very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, while we, uh, while we all finish what we've got in our mouths... One second. Um, we've got a jingle specifically for oh, this occasion. Excellent. We do. This, is true. this happens every time the gang do a food thing in the studio. They're eating, which doesn't really work on radio, and Muggins here has to keep you entertained for a few seconds while they polish off whatever they've got in their gob. Are you three done yet? Just about, <laughs> actually. Indeed um, we are. So, Matty, what's, what's this other stuff you've just brought in? Um... Yeah, I guess a sweet pastry of sorts with marzipan and raisins stuck in it. All right. Well, I'll give one a go. I'm not usually a marzipan fan, but Who? I'll try anything. Who are you? A marzipan, might you mm-hmm. say. Marzipan's the best thing ever. Stolen. Okay, so I'm still on my um, cheesy stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the stolen. I'm not usually a raisin fan, so I, I may be just like picking Maybe. them out. But marzipan, I'm all over. See, I love a raisin, so you, know, you can pick all the raisins out and give them to just me, make, and then make you can a eat little the pile. Rest. Yeah. <laughs> you people are so fussy. <clears throat> mm. I believe there is sort of. a very small list of things I won't eat. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good. Jake in the chat room just says, Food! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are yep. fooding. You're right. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try this stolen. You might have to play the jingle again. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. In your endo. Wrong jingle. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's just made it a bit weirder. Uh, ooh uh. <laughs> uh, This is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you just I... have to ooh uh herself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Matty. That was brilliant. Yes, awesome. thank you very much. Very good food. Oh, cool. okay. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Oh, fantastic. Oh. Brilliant. Well... This is going to keep us uh, keep us satisfied for the rest of the show, I think. Yeah, well, I think it's time for another request. Mm. I think Stalin should always be served with cheese. Uh, <laughs> Stalin and cheese. It's a great combo. Not a bad idea. It's the Geekly Chronicles. <laughs> well, um, we're all slightly covered in cheese after all that, but Indeed. thanks again for uh, joining us, Matty, on the show tonight and cooking some German food for us. Uh, it was really actually quite delicious. Yes. Um, covered in Käsespätzle. I don't, what, what is that? That's what we just ate. Ah, <laughs> Kaiser Kaiser Spätzle. Kaiser Spätzle. Yes. Kaiser Spätzle. Kaiser Spätzle. That's quite a cool name, isn't it? Just yeah, it's like Egon Spengler. Spengler. <laughs> Spengler. All right. I was thinking more Kaiser Sose. <laughs> Ki- I was okay. thinking more Kaiser Permanente. The American insurance. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we mentioned earlier. We. We mentioned earlier that uh, we would be adding a bonus item to Sorry. our wonderful winning word prize draw. Stop going down the Geekly Studio slide. <laughs> <laughs> we really need to install a slide in here. That's That would just top this experience off for me. Well, yeah, and as we mentioned, uh, Terence Eden runs a blog about fun stuff for under a fiver. And we have one of those things to add to the winning word prize bundle. Indeed, we do. Every episode uh, so far this series, we've been ordering something uh, random from the Fiverr Fun blog, fiverrfun.tumblr.com. We have, <coughs> excuse me, that's a bit, that's a bit of Kaiserspätzle. Kaiserspätzle. I can't even say it now because it's trying to choke me. <laughs> um, we have no <laughs> idea what is in. Thank you for that. <laughs> Wonderful. I just forgot that I had a fart button. <laughs> oh yeah, great. <laughs> great. Um, oh, crikey, everyone we're, we're is coughing up well. a lung on the yes. show tonight. Um, winter flu season, everyone. It's winter, we're all ill. 
Indeed. But we have no Speaking idea what's in this box. So I'm going to hand it over the table to Kev. Oh, hello. I've and got a box. We're a box? going to find Package out what this thing. mystery item is. Uh, there we go. Open that up. We're going to throw that at you. Thanks. Uh, you're Fantastic. Welcome. It went in my Kaiser spatula. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Right, so this week's mystery item that is being added to our prize bundle is, drum roll please, a Yankee candle. Hey. Oh. Uh, than a Yankee candle. I don't know what one of those is. It's a spinner as a Yankee candle. <laughs> ah. I'm not sure. I don't know. We really know. But what well, does it, it smell like? It's rhubarb crumble scented. Ooh. And it smells <laughs> like... Uh, <laughs> Indeed. It smells like um Your mum. <laughs> How did <Okay>. you know? <laughs> That's uncanny, it does. Because his mother um, was in fact a rhubarb crumble. Story my mother was a rhubarb crumble a and my father was a carrier pigeon. Anyway, uh yes, a Yankee candle here uh to go with the prize draw. It's a candle. It's a Yankee candle dandy. It's red. Indeed. It's red. It's got rhubarb crumble, but also, yes, ah, not also only an, that, an extra thing this week, indeed, because we've been talking about the wonder that is the seventies dinner party on Twitter and uh, sharing some of those wonderful photos with you uh, of seventies recipes. We thought it only right that we would also give away with this week's prize bundle a copy of the seventies dinner party book. So that will also be making its way to you if you win. And don't forget that uh, that. The winning word is the word to listen out for, or should have listened out for, maybe. The word this week was... Athazagoraphobia. And don't forget that if you can remember at what point in the show we said that word, then give us a call and you could win the Geekly Merchandise Bundle, the Yankee Candle, <laughs> and the book. Uh, how do you win? Let's... Uh... Let's run those numbers. If you hear the winning word, give us a call in the UK on 020 3389 6245 or in the US on 415 287 9705. You might just win something. And pro tip, if you're a bit behind on your Christmas shopping, Geekly Merch Bundle, perfect Christmas gift. Yep, you can give away a lovely Geekly mug or a Geekly t-shirt or stickers or any yeah. number of various things that could go into that merchandise bundle. It's all a random rice <laughs> rice doll. Dice roll is yes. what I meant to say there. Now you're but a rice doll is, is fair enough. That's <laughs> when you've eaten a lot of rice and need to go and claim your unemployment benefit. Rice doll. Or well, your unemployment no. benefit is play, paid in, in rice. rice. In yeah. rice, yeah. My rice doll. Um, but yes, we have our... <laughs> That no, was, I just can't get rice. rice that was very that confusing. <laughs> uh, a random dice roll. But uh, yes, you can win all of that. Yes. Uh, all of that exciting stuff. And if nobody does win it, it rolls over to the next show and we have a massive Christmas bumper bundle. True. But I would, I'd love it if someone won it. So yeah. please, so, you know, think, ring back, in. think back to when we mentioned that word. Give us a call. What? We shall see. You're... you're Waving your hands at me like you're trying to do that. Uh, these sort of droids, my boss. Yeah, yeah. It's like, these are not I realised that's what it looked for. like I was doing when I was doing it. And I was like, you know what? Why not? You will take me to Jabba now. Yes. Um, or perhaps more pertinently, you will take me to Game of Geeks, <laughs> as that is coming up next. Yes. What else have we got coming up in the show? Well, Game of Geeks, the quiz show in which Chris pits Catherine and I against each other. Very exciting. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll we'll be, see if you can claw back some points this time. Yep, we'll be checking back in with our Would You Fund It? So please don't forget you can keep voting for that. Check out Indeed. what it is this week at gkly.co slash fundit. And we will also, at the very end of the show, uh, we've got a super special secret announcement to make rather Ooh. excitingly, but we will also uh, be checking back on our Twitter poll of which is the ultimate 1973 Christmas song. Is it I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day or Merry Christmas, Everybody? It's the Geekly Chronicles. Ooh. It's that time of the show again. Oh, yeah. It's time to flex my buzzer arm. You really are flexing your buzzer arm. It's oh, and yes, we've got buzzers. Yes, you do. So, Game of Geeks, as Kez explained, is the, the part of the show where I pit uh, Kez and Catherine against each other in a, in a contest of geek knowledge. Uh, and for this week's buzzer noises, I've gone a bit 70s. 
Because we're all going a bit 70s. Well, it's, it is a bit of a 70s show. It, 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 it is. is that 70s show for us. Indeed. So um, this week I've, I've uh, come up with some 70s TV theme tunes. So Kez goes. Wow. Theme from Top of the Pops in the uh, early 70s. And Catherine goes. Ah, yes, the theme from that sports thing. Yes. Mm, sports ball. Sports ball. Yes. Sports the one that's not match of the day. Thing. I like the fact that you think I'm top of the pops. And I'm balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like it's like typecasting again right there, isn't it? Indeed. Okay, um, so, so this week's Game of Geeks. I'm yes. <laughs> I'm going to be asking you questions. If you get it on the first clue, you get three points. Second clue, you get two points. And if you get it on the last clue, you only get one point. But if you do that, you can choose to double or nothing your one point with a bonus question. Exciting. So let's get straight to round one. This is a book. And question one is, fingers on buzzers, please. This was Google Play's top selling book this year. And this Sunday Times number one bestseller by Paula Hawkins is now a film starring Emily Blunt. Okay, I don't know who Google is going to Kez. I've just realised that what I was thinking is totally wrong. Do you want to guess it anyway? I was thinking a street cat named Bob. You are completely wrong yes. uh, about that, I'm afraid. But, you know, it's worth it is a, It a is a best-selling in. book that has been turned into a film, so yes. it wasn't entirely off. It wasn't, however, written by Paula Hawkins, and it was not turned into a film starring Emily Blunt. Actually, I um, don't know if she's in. Is I'm Emily Blunt related not... to James Blunt? Not as far as I know, but I have no idea. <laughs> are, you, are you repeating answers at all from previous rounds, just to... Just to mess with us? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No. I, I've written questions properly. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. Next clue then. Question number two or clue number two for this, this round. The story is a first person narrative told from the point of view of three women, Rachel, Anna and Megan. Yeah, I am no closer. It's shedding no light. Nope. Well, I've now got Mambo number five stuck in my head, <laughs> but that aside... <laughs> It is. It is not. It is not. I was going more a dramatization of. Love you from the bottom of my friends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I like that. I like that. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, no. So let's move on to que uh, well, clue number three. Uh, this story features an awful lot of commuting. This could be what I thought it was, isn't it? But snakes on a plane. Snakes on a plane is not the right answer. Don. Catherine. The girl on the train? Is the right oh, answer. That's what <laughs> I was thinking. But I thought you'd done this the other week, whereas it wasn't. It was Gone Girl. It was Gone Girl. But a week. lot of people have described the girl on the train as the next Gone Girl. Could so I just raise my hand here and say I haven't heard of either of those things? I mean, one well, of them was a Game of Geeks clue. Massive, so but I haven't read either of them. Massive. Well, they are massive, but I don't. I just I haven't spotted them. Catherine, you have scored one point. Would you like to double or nothing gamble your point? Or stick with your one point? I think I'm going to keep my point. Keep your point. Yeah, okay. keep my little point. Keep it, keep it warm, keep mm -hmm. it safe. All righty then. Moving on to question number two. Exciting. Fingers on buzzers, please. Mm. I've got my whole hand on the buzzer. <laughs> this is a TV series. Clue number one. This sitcom, which ran for seven seasons from 2009 to 2015, satirizes the local government of a small town in Indiana. Ah! I know this. If you Parks and Rec, darn it, <laughs> is the right answer. You got in there just before me. I was a hand on the buzzer. I knew that one. Yes, it was <sighs> another one of those first to buzz moments. Um, the whole competition is a first to buzz <laughs> moment. Yes, I'm this channeling is also my true. inner Des Lynam. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, which was uh, I can tell. Oh, I might have to tell my potato joke after. after this. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Good time. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> round three this one is a film so uh, return your fingers to their buzzing positions as if they ever left <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, this film is the 55th animated Disney feature film if anyone's counting 55th in order of release from Disney 
Kez. Finding Dory. Is incorrect, I'm oh. afraid. Very, very close, but I'm afraid it, that was not the 55th release of Disney. Any ideas, Catherine? I've got an idea, but I don't... I only know what letter it begins with. <laughs> <laughs> I know I heard so I don't know it I was an idea from something well, I heard on the radio and I don't know yeah I'll give move, me more clues give I'll us move more clues. on next clue next and clue. we'll see what we can get stars among uh, among others the stars of this film include Idris Elba J.K. Simmons Alan Tudyk and Shakira they were all voices hmm. in this film it, ha okay, it really has an all star mind. cast but uh, those were a few names I picked out now I remember Alan Tudyk being in being in an animated film, but oh, I can't remember which one. Well, that one that he was in was also the fifty-fifth animated Disney feature film. All incidentally, right. so, I would uh, I would like the last clue. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give yeah us okay, the last clue, clue please. Yeah. This film details the unlikely partnership between a police officer who is a rabbit and a fo a con artist who is a I'm red. Never going to remember the name of this. No. I can picture the rabbit, <laughs> but I've no idea what the film's called. Any ideas, Kez? No. Would you like me to reveal the answer? Yes. Yeah. It was Zootropolis. Oh, oh yeah, okay. That yeah. um, it's also called Zootopia in other countries, but Zootropolis is what it was called here. I yeah, I never would have got there. No. Fair enough. Uh, All right, next one then. Move along. To question number four. This is a TV series, and this ABC Studios produced fantasy series has run for six seasons starting in 2011, and the most recent series started in September this year. Which started this year? The most recent of the six seasons, so the sixth season. <laughs> I'm not going to make you do that math yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all good. I'm just having a bit of brain Teflon. <laughs> I'm struggling with this. I feel like I ought to know it. Yeah, but... Would you like me to read you... There's lots of TV shows. There are lots of TV shows. Kez has buzzed. There's no harm in making a guess. Is it The Walking Dead? It is not. Okay. The Walking Dead That's is produced... That's on Series 7. It is uh, on Series 7, and it's produced by AMC mm. rather than ABC. Oh, whatever. Unfortunately, but moving on to clue number two. This series is set in the fictional town of Storybrook in Maine. Oh, you beat me to it. Kev? Is it Once Upon a Time? Is the right answer. Coming in <laughs> after two clues, that scores you two points. Does that make me equal? No, that does not make me equal. Because I have four Catherine points. Has four points. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. But if you get this one right... Uh, on the first clue, you uh, you may well claw yourself back a victory. All right, then. This is a film, and clue number one is, this film, which was released in 2001, was an adaptation of a book released in 1996 and is widely regarded as the prime example of its genre. 2001. 2001, when the film came out, from a 1996 book which is the prime example of, of the genre it is in. Yes? Is it Kill Bill? It's not Kill Bill, oh. I'm afraid. I feel that's a good guess, then. Yeah. It's a good guess. All right, next clue. Moving on to clue number two, a sequel of this film, which, by the way, is loosely based on Pride and Prejudice, was released in 2004, and a second sequel was released in September 2016. Catherine. Bridget Jones' Diary? Is the correct answer. Boom! <laughs> How is that a prime example of its genre? Critics it's a prime the ultimate it chiclet. As if the, the genre chiclet. is poo, then it is a prime example of I, it. I love you some Bridget Jones. <laughs> I, well, you love you some poo, then? Mm-hmm. I love me some Bridget Jones as Bridget, well. But oh, the best and worst <laughs> things in hosting? life are brown. <laughs> Who am I hosting yeah, a radio show with? Coming in after two clues, that scores Catherine two points, which means at the end of the quiz that... I'm not pressing the button. <laughs> You're going to need to press I'm the button. I'm not pressing the button. You're sore going to loser. need to press the button. Yeah, I am a sore loser. The question's rigged. All oh, right, fine. This week's winner is... Catherine. 
Catherine. It's funny how they weren't rigged when you were winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the questions do tend to be very rigged in favour of the people that can get them right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. There was a, some good guesses in the uh, chat room, by the way, from uh, from you. Uh, Pink Fuzzy Sheep put in Secret Life of Pets for the Zootropolis question, which uh, which is a good guess there as well. Um, but yeah. That was a cute film. Thanks for taking part. And congratulations, Catherine. Thank you. Well, coming up uh, in the remaining 10 minutes of the show, we've got... Uh, uh, We've got a, a quick request for you now. Then we're going to be checking in on uh, Would You Fund It? We'll be seeing mm. what our Christmas poll has done. And we'll be making a very special announcement about... We will, indeed. Stuff. Something. Stuff. Indeed. It's the Geekly Chronicles. How geekly can these chronicles be? They're very geekly. The Geekly Chronicles. Well, uh, it's... Well, if we're just five minutes away from the end of the show. I make it four. Ooh, you best check in on would yes. you fund it yes okay Let's so indeed. my idea the song clip how's it going Let's have a look at those results so the song clip that provides you with your own personal soundtrack is funded yes <laughs> with 67 percent of the audience tonight voted in favor of funding the song clip and getting their own personal soundtrack wherever they go oh, I love it that is that is my goal in life is to have that yeah. Yeah, mm. I want it for the the homes under the hammer music. <laughs> um, that that is a potential feature that wasn't in the original uh, thing. I would back it to that stretch goal. <laughs> but we also have some rather exciting news to share, do we not? We do. Um, news. We've got. Uh, well, we're on series. We're on episode six of the series. Mm -hmm. Yes. Episode seven is on the twenty third of December. Yeah, and we have time. a we have a fantastic cri Christmas. Christmassy, wintry, holiday themed episode lined up for you. Indeed, we do. Uh, where we will also be giving away a massive prize bundle. As, well, yes. Uh, unless anyone calls in in the next two and a half minutes, we are uh, we are I'm rolling over. I'm going to go ahead and say the lines are closed. <laughs> they're not. We've, closed. we've not got time. They're not closed but, until um, it's no, not closed until it's over. But um, it's basically over. <sighs> but the prizes will roll over to the next show, and we will give away a gigantic geekly prize bundle. Uh, of all sorts of merch and the Yankee Candle and the 70s dinner yeah, party. I don't like the word merch. And it feels like an old shortening of merchandise. And I don't, merchandise feels very corporate. I don't know, like merch. Swag. I like swag. Okay. Swag's good. Swag but, just but reminds swag me of Ellie Robinson. Swag like corporate swag and it's like just tat that you don't want. Uh, yeah. Whereas merchandise is something that you do want. You know, it's it's the Doctor Who action figure. It's, I feel like uh, we've forgotten know, the, the excitement of our big oh news. God, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> we, have, we have some big news. Sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, so, yes, we have our Christmas episode coming up next week where we've got plenty of stuff on. Um, but then but it's it, the new year. And then it's the new year. And new year, new geekly. We are very happy to roll over a uh, series five into the new year with a very special new year's episode very special uh because we are extending the new year's episode by an entire hour it will mm -hmm. be a three hour long episode because um there won't just be three presenters there will not no we have bonus presenters for you there'll be five of us in the studio five. we in will be studio. joined by from this year's great british bake-off Andrew Smith and Tom Gilliford. Yep, yep. The Bake Off boys are coming here. As Matty was in our kitchen tonight, so will they be uh, with uh, yeah, here with us. They'll be spending the day with us. We'll be doing some baking and we'll have a special three-hour show with uh, with them as, as co-presenters with us. Yes. It's going to be really exciting. Yep. Uh, keep Very checking our Twitter it. for more uh, more details on when that'll be happening and, uh, and how that goes. And... Uh, Indeed. <laughs> well, yeah. You go ahead. Speaking of our Twitter, uh, just to let you know, decisively the winner of Ultimate Christmas Song, according to our poll, is I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day by Wizard. So, quite rightly, we will be back on the 23rd of December, but for now, I'm Kez. I'm Chris. And, well, I've been Catherine. You've been listening to the Geekly Chronicles. Content was researched and vaguely fudged together by Chris, Catherine and Kez, who are also your hosts for this evening's show. The Geekly Chronicles is a tiny kettle production. Any reference to any persons or things living or dead was probably in error. What is reality anyway? Don't take the blue pill, live long and prosper, wear sunscreen. Mm -hmm.